All right, guys, this is going to be an interesting one. I had a question from the third chapter of the Merriam textbook, Injury and Mechanics. And we need to determine the force T required to hold the uniform bar with a mass of M. And we know it has a length of L in an arbitrary angular position theta. And we also need to plot our results uh, in the range of theta from 0 to 90 degrees. And also at the end of it, we have to find the value of the T for theta equals 40 degrees. So we're going to solve this in equilibrium condition meaning we have all of our equilibrium equations but before that we're gonna uh, try to draw the free body diagram for the bar that we have in here the ao so we have a pin at point o which means we have two component one horizontal one vertical we can just call our x and y in here since we have a uniform bar we can see that the center of mass would be exactly at the center so if the length is L is going to be half of L and it's going to be the force that we're going to have from the weight mass times acceleration of gravity or the weight that we have and uh, we have the cable that is attached to point A we have one single table that goes around this pulley in here and it will attach at point A meaning we have the same tension in that single cable which is the T and that's pretty much everything that we have in here since we are asked to find the uh, force t based on theta in here so if we just use our equilibrium equation sum of all moments about point o we're going to get rid of all the unknowns that we have at point o and we should be able to find the relationship between t and the weight of this bar so we have some information the question we know this angle right here is theta and we're just going to call this angle that it makes a cable with horizontal alpha which would be this angle in here so the moment of weight as we can see is going to be in this direction so it will be negative so minus mg and the distance that we are interested would be the vertical distance from o to the line of action or what we have in here which we're going to make a right triangle i'm going to highlight it maybe in green so this right triangle here the hypotenuse would be half of the l as i said the center of mass would be exactly at the center of this bar and the angle so this angle is also theta so if you want to find the opposite side to angle theta we're going to have l divided by 2 which is the hypotenuse sine of theta and we're going to have the moment of the t as we can see this moment is going to be counterclockwise so plus t and the distance that we are interested would be the vertical distance to the line of action so what we're going to do we can basically consider our position vector from o to any points on the line of action of t so if you just continue t so it's going to cross this point, which is the point B that we have in here. We can resolve this into two components, X and Y. And if we look at it, we'll see that the Y component is going to pass through O, so it won't make any moment. And we're going to have the moment of the, the horizontal component, which is this one. And we know also this angle is alpha, so this will be T cosine of alpha. So now we found the vertical force to our position vector. So it will be T cosine of alpha. And the distance that we have would be the distance from here to here. Which from the question we know this distance is L. So times L equals here. Because as long as we can find the relationship between alpha and theta, we should be able to find the final answer in here but let's see how we can find the relationship between alpha and theta so if we look at this right triangle in here so as i said we know this angle is theta so the length of the bar is l so from here to here we're gonna have l cosine of theta and this side in here would be L sine of theta, which if we look at the other right triangle that we have in here, this side would be L sine of theta as well. So all we need to do in here is just find this little distance, which would be L minus L cosine of theta, because we know the whole distance from here to here is L. So that little distance or the other side of the 
green right triangle would be L minus L cosine of theta. That was the trick of this question. So if you just want to find the cosine of alpha in here, if you look at that right triangle that we have, the green one on top, uh, cosine of alpha in here would be the adjacent, which is L sine of theta over the hypotenuse. Finding the hypotenuse is pretty easy. We're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. We have the two other sides, so it will be the square root of one side, which is L sine of theta squared plus the other one, L minus L cosine squared of theta. And that's how we're going to find the, the relationship between cosine of alpha and the angle theta that we have in here. So rest of this is just simplifying this fraction. So we can take out the L from the square root in the denominator. So each of them, this will be L2 sine squared of theta. And here we can factor L. So actually I made a mistake in here. I don't know why I wrote this. So L minus L cosine of theta squared. So again, I did the Pythagorean theorem when we have this one A, this one B, and the hypotenuse th C. We know C is equal to square root of A squared plus B squared, which is what I did in the denominator here. So we can factor L in here, so L is going to come out. So sine of theta, and we're going to cancel out the L in the numerator and denominator. So what we're going to have in here is the sine squared of theta, and here we're going to have 1 squared minus 2 times 1 times cosine of theta. <clears throat> and this will be plus cosine squared of theta. And we know sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 or any other variables that we want. So these two is going to be also 1. So our cosine of alpha in here would be sine of alpha, sine of theta over the square root of 1 plus 1. This is also 1. And as I said, sine squared of theta plus cosine of squared of theta is also 1. So 2 minus 2 cosine of. Let's, back, let's get back to our moment equation. That's what we got from the last step. Basically, t cos, we can cancel out the l's in here if just small, uh, divide everything by l. So, t cosine of alpha is equal to one half of mg time sine of alpha. So, t would be one half of mg sine of theta over cosine of alpha. That's what we get from our equilibrium equations. If we just cross multiply this, we're going to get what we had in there. So we just have to put the cosine of alpha that we have in here in the denominator here. So the numerator and denominator will switch. So t would be one half of mg sine of theta over, that's our denominator, sine of theta over 2 minus 2 cosine of theta. I'm going to this will be one and the way we're going to deal with this kind of fraction is that these two are going to go into the denominator and we're going to multiply these two and that's going to go in the numerator so on the numerator we're going to have sine of theta times two minus two cosine of theta and obviously we have one half of mg2 i'm just going to try to explain how we're going to get rid of the sine of theta in here. And as I said, we're going to have one half of, I'm just going to write it in here, one half of mg. So uh, this is almost over. So we're just going to bring the one half inside of the square root. So mg, and if we want to bring the one half inside, it will be one quarter. So two minus two cosine of theta. Again, I was, I'm trying, uh, I was trying to get this inside of the square root. So if, if it comes out, it will be the one half that we have in the previous step. And we have to multiply this in each of them. So our t would be mg times 
2 divided by 4 would be half minus 0.5 cosine of beta and that would be what the question is asking. So the question asks us to find a value if our theta is 40 degrees. So our T would be basically uh, MGL's calculate what we get in here. The square root of 0.5 minus 0.5 times cosine of 40, which is going to be 0.342. That's the answer when we have our theta of 40 degrees. And if you just want to plot this, uh, if you just bring back mg on the left side, we're going to have the square root of 0.5 minus 0.5 cosine of theta. And if you just want to plot the t over mg based on our angle theta in degrees, we're going to get something like this. If we put 180 degrees that's going to give us we know cosine of 180 is minus one so it will be 0.5 plus 0.5 which is one so this is going to give us one and this will be our zero i think the question asked for 90 degrees so it will be somewhere in here and if you just put 90 degrees we're going to get uh basically a square root of 0.5 so yeah, that's pretty much everything for this question. Hope everything was clear. Let me know if you guys have any questions. You guys take care. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.